Hi, Hi, Kitty Wink Wink listeners. listeners. I'm Juliana. And I'm Lindsay. Glad you're all here for story time. Okay, open-hearted, playful, and intelligent listeners. This is episode number 13. (laughs) Woohoo! This story highlights the number 13 and the letter M. Thanks for listening and being part of the Kitty Wink crew with us and our octopus pal, Ozzy. Are we ready to guess the animal in this story? Let's go. Okay, clue number one is they have curved front paws and claws that dig like shovels. Whoa. I know, that'd be so fun. Number two, they build long tunnels and underground homes. Ooh, that's a really good clue. Okay. And number three is they eat worms. Gummy worms? No, regular <laughs> worms. <laughs> Hmm, great clues, Lindsay. Those are interesting. Listeners, what do you think? Hmm. Is it a, a mole? Yes. Listeners, if you also guessed a mole, you are correct. I wonder how many of you know anything about moles. We really don't talk about those animals very often. So yeah. I'm yeah, I'm glad we get to hear a story about them. Yeah, this is my first story I've ever heard about a mole. I mean, you thought maybe they ate gummy worms, so <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to listen closely. Um, <laughs> listeners, be sure to listen for the number 13 and the letter M, and we'll chat at the end with our Kitty Wink guest. Enjoy a Kitty Wink story from us. It's time to listen, and then we'll discuss. Yahoo! Let's go! Mohammed sat in his room doing what he loved most reading. I also love reading. Everyone calls him a bookworm, but he isn't a worm. He's a mole. (laughs) But he sees why he's called that, because he does love reading as much as a bookworm. He doesn't love every type of book, though. He's particularly obsessed with mystery books. Ooh. Mm -hmm. There's a series called Detective Molly the Mole, and he's read all 13 of the books in the series. Oh, good for him. Yeah, he loves pretending to be Molly. He uses a magnifying glass and tries to find clues for made-up mysteries. Oh, it's a good thing Muhammad has a magnifying glass. A mole's eyesight isn't great, so they also use their nose and feet to smell and touch to find things. That's such an interesting thing about moles. Oh, hi there, Muhammad. Are you solving another mystery? His mom asked him when he walked into the kitchen to get breakfast. Shh, mom, I need to listen and look for clues, Mohammed said in a whisper. How about this bowl of earthworms? Are they clues? Mom asked, trying to get Mohammed to sit down for breakfast. Mm, I guess I could check them out. I should count them. How many did you give me, mom? Thirteen, just like every breakfast. Mom responded. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, good. Case closed. Thanks for breakfast, Mom. Mohammed gulped down the earthworms and ran out the door to go find his friends and head to school. Hey, Mohammed, Michael said when he saw Mohammed fly out his door. They started their typical underground walk to school. After walking for only a few minutes, Muhammad heard Michael's stomach growl. Are you feeling okay, Michael? Yeah, I'm I'm fine. Just a little hungry. We were out of earthworms this morning. Oh no. I'm so sorry. Maybe we will find some on our walk to school. They found a few other insects, but nothing as delicious as earthworms. Oh, it sounds like he's super hungry. Yeah. After school, Mohammed mentioned this to his mom. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'll talk to his mom and see if I can help, his mom said. Satisfied with that answer, Mohammed headed to his room. The rest of the week was pretty typical. Mohammed would wake up, read some detective books, eat his 13 earthworms, and then walk to school with Michael. They both loved school. And they loved that they were in the same class together. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's so fun to be in the same class as one of your closest friends. Friday was a little different, though. Muhammad woke up, read a chapter of his latest detective book, and then came down for breakfast. His mom wasn't there, though. And, oh, no! 
is 13 earthworms weren't there either. Uh oh. This felt like a job for Detective, Detective Mohammed. He grabbed his magnifying glass and started looking all around the kitchen. There's the jar that usually holds earthworms. Empty. Where are mom's shoes? Hmm, his bowl isn't even out and there's no note. What in the world is going on? Mohammed went into his mom's room. She wasn't there. Uh-oh. Her bed was made. Things are still looking a little strange. As he walks back into the kitchen, he notices his mom's footprints. He gets closer to them with his magnifying glass. Right, remember, moles don't have that good eyesight. Yeah. He also sniffs and touches them. And yes, indeed, they're definitely his mom's. He decides to follow the tracks, as any skilled detective would do. Good. And they take him on a maze throughout the underground rounds. He ends up right in front of Michael's house. Oh, wow. He listens through the door and hears multiple people laughing. And then all of a sudden, the door opens. Oh, my goodness. Mohammed, you surprised me. Mohammed's mom said, I surprised you. You surprised me. I didn't have any idea where you were. Mohammed responded, I just came here to invite Michael and his mom over for breakfast. We were about to walk back to our house. Oh, good. I guess it's case closed then. He heard Michael say, huh? But just mumbled, never mind. And then they headed back to Mohammed's house. The moms put the bowl of 13 earthworms in front of the boys and took two mugs of coffee into the other room so they could chat. Mohammed started passing the earthworms out. One for Michael, one for Mohammed, one for Michael, and one for Mohammed, and so on until there was a problem. They each had six earthworms, but there was one more left in the bowl. Who should get the last one? Oh, yeah, there was 13 in total, right? Right. You can have the last one, Mohammed, said Michael. But that didn't feel right or fair to Mohammed. No, wait. I know just what to do. He got up and got a knife and cut the last earthworm in half. Half for you and half for me. Now we each have six and a half earthworms. It felt completely fair to everyone. And both Michael and Muhammad got to fill up on tasty earthworms before leaving for school. That's such a clever, clever thing for Muhammad to do. Yeah. Turns out there was a way to split an odd number of earthworms fairly. And most importantly, no one's tummy rumbled on their way. Michael was so thankful for his friend's kindness. Mohammed was glad Michael wasn't hungry and was already searching for more clues for his next case. Time to find another mystery to solve. And that's the end. Let's call a kitty wink. Hi, kitty wink. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Brody and I'm six years old. And uh, my favorite animal is duck. A duck. Oh, you must have loved our D story. Yeah, I did. Oh, good. Uh, uh, thanks for sharing and being part of the crew. We're so glad you came on this week's journey with us. Can you tell us what your favorite part of the story was? When he was trying to find his mom. Yeah, did he go on a little detective walk to try and find her? Yeah. Yeah, he became a detective. Did he? What did he have in his hands to help him? Do you remember? Um, I'm flying. He did. And Brody, did he think he was a real detective? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, he, did. he did. He was pretty good at detective work, right? Yeah. Yeah, did he end up finding his mom? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you notice the letter M come up in this story? Uh, yes. Where did you notice it? I know we just said his name, right? What was his name? Muhammad. That's an M word. Was there another one? Uh, yeah. Mole. Mole. You're right. And mama. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say we talked about mom too. And then what was Muhammad's friend's name? Michael. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of M's. Do you know another Michael? Uh, yeah, my dad. Yeah, you do. You know, a lot of M words. Hi, Dad, Michael. What about the number 13? Did that come up in the story? Yeah. When did that come up? When 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 he had um 13 um 
earthworms. Right. And when he had them for himself, that was fine. But then what about when he was sharing the 13 with Michael? Do you remember what happened? Uh, yeah, they had to, they had to split it. Yeah. Huh. So they each had how many? Um, Six. And then there was one extra that they split. Yeah. Have you ever had to split something in half with your brothers? Like maybe a cookie uh, or something to share? Yes. I bet you have. Listeners, I bet you've had to share something by splitting it in half. Some people don't always have all the food they need. And it's really nice to share food with other people if they need it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you feel good when you share with your brothers? Uh, <laughs> not so much. Really. Not, so. not so much, but not I bet so you much. feel good when you donate food or something, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you share right. cookies with your friends, right? Yes. Would you share cookies with us? Yes. Oh, good. Good. Phew. Phew. Before wrapping up, Brody, let's play a game. Let's do our would you rather. Are you ready? Yeah. Would you rather be a mole, maybe even Mohammed, or a monkey? Um, a monkey. Why? Because they can swing places and jump far. Oh, I totally agree. And a mole can like barely see, right? Uh-huh. It was underground. I would also be a monkey. and I would swing from the trees too. What about you, Jules? Yeah, the only thing that is like a winning um, attribute for me on the mole thing is moles have those curved front paws that dig like shovels, as Lindsay gave as one of her clues. But that's about the only positive thing I can think about for a mole. So I'm with you. I'm with a monkey. They have better food. I don't want to be eating earthworms. I would love a tail as a tool to swing on trees. And I would be hanging out with both of you if I was a monkey. That'd be awesome. I love it. All right. Great answers. Kitty Wink listeners, I bet you had a great answer to that too. Now, Brody, do you have a would you rather for us and our listeners? Uh, Yes. Okay. Let's hear it. Would you rather... Um, be a duck or a mole? Ooh, a duck or a mole. Let's see. Mm. Ooh, I think I would say duck because they can swim too. I I bet I know that your answer is duck, right? Yes. Because you told us that's your favorite animal. Yeah. Yeah. I would be a duck too. Ducks are awesome. They can swim. They can fly. They sleep swimming in the water. I mean, how fun is that? I mean, pretty awesome. I think that's great. Well, thank you, Brody and listeners, for tuning in to episode number 13. And we cannot wait to be with you again on another episode. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Brody. That was so fun to be with all of you and have a conversation with our Kitty Wink guest, Brody. If you would like to be a Kitty Wink guest, please reach out. We would love to have you. Email us at contactkittywink at gmail.com. And check out our Instagram page at Kitty Wink Crew. Yes, we would love to have artwork from our Kitty Winks to share. Can you draw Mohammed being a detective and maybe show us what six and a half worms look like on a plate? Please send that our way. We might just feature your artwork on our page. Thanks for letting us share what we love, stories. Please come back next week for a new podcast story adventure. We want to grow our community, so please show us some love by liking, subscribing, and reviewing. Remember to always love yourself, others, and spread that love everywhere. Or as Ozzy would say, lead with your three hearts. Goodbye. Go, Kiwik. Yay. Stories written and read by Juliana Bria and Lindsay Farley. Original theme by Miriam Mayer. Artwork by Amy Nicholson and Maggie Porter. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. This has been a Kitty Wing Crew production.